1917. Uh, I guess the first order of business would be to introduce the new board. Uh, last night there were two, two new board members sworn, well, uh, appointed to the board, which I believe were sworn in today. Uh, I'm John Costigan, the ch current chair. Uh, I'm a pharmacist. I've been a pharmacist for over 30 years. I've been a town resident now for over 25 years. Uh, and the chair of the board here now for the last, I think, five months or so now. Uh, in the, would you like to sure. know who you are? <clears throat> My name is Kevin Sexton. I'm the uh, former selectman here in the town of Reading. I'm a realtor by trade and certainly looking forward to uh, taking on a new experience and learning a lot from uh, current board members such as yourself, John. Okay. Um, my name is Heidi Pfeiffer. I've lived in Reading for 28 years. I'm a nurse um, for like 33 years. Um, so I was just interested in getting involved in the community. So I applied for this back in May when there was sort of an interim, but just never, nothing ever happened with that. So here I am. <laughs> well, welcome. Welcome to the Board of Health, both of you. Uh, I also would like to acknowledge Beth Sherlin. Beth was our uh, a member that resigned last night. Uh, she did a lot to, uh, for the board. She brought a lot of energy, a lot of ideas to the board, a lot of which we're hopefully can be implementing some in, in the not too distant future. Uh, we, we're going to miss Beth, but uh, hopefully we can start anew with what we have here. I'm looking forward to it, uh, for sure. Uh, now, did are you aware of the Board of Health being a three? Have you you've served obviously on a board before? Mm -hmm. Have you been on a town board before? Uh, this this is a three member board, which means uh, if more than one member uh, meets, it is considered a quorum. So that limits that kind of limits our discussion to what we can talk about among us, amongst ourselves. Uh, that just so you're aware of that. Uh, and Nancy, we've already had introductions. I'm you... sorry, Nancy Doctor. Mm -hmm. This is Heidi. This is Hi. Heidi. How are you? Yeah. Nice. nice to meet you. Uh, Mr. <coughs> Chairman, if I could interject, uh, if you're through with your opening comments, or mm -hmm. do you have more? I'll, I'll wait. Uh, well, I was just, uh, you go right ahead, sure. Uh, Bob passed me a note, and I think a good form would be since you effectively reorganized, the board is new. You should probably entertain nominations for chair and vice chair, so you designate two officers, a chair and a backup. Mm -hmm. uh, and Gene, could you, normally Bob would step in and facilitate that part of the meeting, you know, until the chair is elected, then he can ask for nominations for the vice chair. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you want to do that? Sure, I'd be happy to. Is that what the feeling mm -hmm. of the board is that we want to go, that, that go ahead with fine. that? Okay. Mm -hmm. That would be fine. All right. Do we have any motions for? I uh, make a motion to name John Costigan chair. Is there a second? Second. No. All in favor? Okay. Any opposed? Take over. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Any nominations from the floor? Well, you can do that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, good. I'm done. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> Just got to get him on board. There we are. Uh, is there a nomination for vice chair for the board? I would like to nominate Kevin Sexton to a vice chair, if that's okay. Yeah, Any? Thanks. Do it second. A second. Okay. Uh, motion's been seconded. All in favor for Kevin Sexton to be vice chair? Aye. Uh, Great, so, you. duly noted, Kevin unanimous, Kevin is vice chair. Uh, uh, yeah, that is, as far as what I was saying, just so you're aware that we actually can't uh, communicate uh, among ourselves. Uh, what we've what we've done in the past, for the most part, is direct our conversations through someone in town hall, whether it be the health agent or it's been the assistant town manager since uh, Bob Bracy has been our uh, temporary uh, uh, chair uh, uh, health agent. <coughs> so, Stephen used to do that before as our health agent. Right, right, mm -hmm. and we. So when Stephen was our past health agent, we did uh, go through Stephen. Uh, we kind of, in order to save Bob's time, sort of, we've gone through Gene in the, in the, in the uh, interim, so. 
that's sort of how we end up communicating. And he wouldn't forward emails, he actually would just um, write his own emails, is what he did. He wasn't just a pass through. Well, yes, he, we would, yeah, okay, yes, yeah. He, we, would, we would give him information and he would disseminate the information. Yes. yes. So I know Jean, you're the assistant town manager? Jean Delius, yes, I'm the assistant okay. town manager. And Laura Vlasic is the health agent. Did you meet Bob Bracey? Yeah, yeah. I did. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, I guess first on my agenda, well, first of all, I guess, did, did you have any questions, Heidi, about anything, or procedures, or what we're... Um, no, I think I'm no, okay. I mean, the, uh, I've got a list of uh, things that you can sort of look at, so which we can go into in a minute. Uh, I, first on my agenda, I guess, was the, was the health agent uh, position. Uh, as I said, Bob Bracey is currently our uh, interim health agent. We had Steve, we had a, a health agent Steve back in, I think it was January, February that he resigned. Mm -hmm. January, yeah. January. Uh, he, he resigned, I think it was the same night that I was uh, elected chair back in, in January. Uh, I just, there, there's been quite a bit of controversy of the health agent position over the last few months. Uh, I just had a statement getting my thoughts together. I could just, I don't know if this will help you out at all, but just, just to get this off my chest. Uh, it has been evident over the last few months of my desire to have a full-time health agent at our service. I remember the fervor of our appeal to the town of the need and importance for that position to be filled. Although the service of Bob Bracey has been exemplary, I think we can all agree we did expect Bob to be an interim position. Although the board has not been in agreement on a successor, of a successor, I would like to acknowledge my fellow board members for their views and determination for what they feel is best in town. The ability to express different opinions is the hallmark of our government and should be encouraged. However, I have stated that I was not comfortable with the process of the executive session in this case. In my opinion, reason one of the executive session is a civilized way to resolve what in bygone days would be grounds for a duel. I firmly believe that questioning and impugning one's character, integrity, and honor in the public arena is a big deal and should have a high bar to qualify for. Uh, the uncor uncorroborated email we received did not reach that bar for me. Uh, through Jean, I had asked to submit evidence of inappropriate behavior to the town manager or town council. Since we had not spoken about the reason for calling executive session, and I had not been present at the two executive sessions previous, I was not aware of the actual reason for calling of the reason one of executive session until our session just prior to last uh, August 29th meeting with the selectmen. Uh, at the selectmen's meeting, the contents of the letter were called into question after there had been an investigation into the matter, which we had asked for in the first place. I do lament the loss of our public health nurse, but I do wish that we had been presented with information resulting from that investigation. In short, the reality is that Laura has been hired to be our health agent, and I have faith that given the chance, Laura will excel in providing for the benefit of the public health and mitigate the risks of not having a full-time health agent for the town. With, with that, I would like uh, to just state uh, title 16 of Mass General Laws, Title 16, Chapter 111, uh, Section 30, which states, and I should have printed these up for everyone, Section 30 states, Boards of Health may appoint agents or directors of public health to act for them in cases of emergency if they cannot conveniently assemble. And any such agent or director shall have the authority which the board appointing him had, or, or her in in whatever case, 
but shall in each case within two days report his action or her action to the board for its approval and shall be directly responsible to it and under its direction and control. An agent or director of public health appointed to make sanitary inspections may complaint of violations of any law, ordinance, law, ordinance, or bylaw relative to the public health. Uh, I guess with that said, we have been without a full-time uh, health agent for, like I said, probably over six months now. And although it's not the uh, magnitude, uh, Dan, but sometimes I think of not having a full-time health agent, it would be sort of like the Board of Selectmen not having the town manager. Uh, although, of course, not of that magnitude. But I noticed that Beth, at the, at the meeting, at the Selectmen's meeting last night, did mention that uh, things have been a little askew since since January, and I, I kind of agree with that. We it, I think we we would be better served with a with a full time health agent. Uh, does anyone have any comments, or reaction? Or? The previous health agent was at a full time position or part time fire. We had a full time until January. Until January. And right now they're just North Reading is covering. Yes. Bob, Bob is covering for us oh, for right. what, Bob? Maybe 15 hours a week? 15, 20 hours. Plus training with Laura, doing some training with her right now. And Bob is our current, I mean, Bob <coughs> is our, he has our ability to action. He has our, our power to act in our behalf as the health agent. Uh, that being said, with that power, I, again, I would, it, it's been no secret, I would like a full-time health agent, so I would like to put a motion on the floor to, to appoint Laura Vlasic as our health agent. Second. 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 <laughs> on, uh, any discussion on the motion? Um, she was hired by the town manager, though. Yes, the, the town hires, uh, but it's up to the board to oh. appoint uh, yeah, that's awesome. our power. We have certain powers vested under Mass General Laws, which uh, give us the ability to protect and preserve the health and safety of, uh, of our residents. Uh, and we bestow that, uh, as, as I read in, in the Mass General Law, uh, we give them that power to act in our stead. Uh, and then they would report to us within two days. Um, any discussion on the motion, Heather? Uh, motion on the floor? Uh, all in favor for Laura Vlasic to be health agent? All opposed? Zero. Uh, three zero in favor? Uh, the other issue on the agenda was for Cafe Cavarotti. Uh, Can we appoint him as health agent, as an um, inspector now, though? Yeah, I think you have to do, do you? Do you? Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, What's going on? Uh, well, the we are we have one health inspector. Is John Frelick still going to be an inspector? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, um, as far as we know. Uh, yes. Okay. I did have one thing on the agenda, which I don't know um, if it's going to matter if you're demoted or not, because it has to do with things you've signed. Do we need uh, to talk about it while you're still our health agent? I'm not your health agent anymore. So you've already voted, so it's all yes. okay. So we but can still talk about it. Yeah, we're okay. going to talk about it for later on for the agenda. I just wanted to make sure. sure. Okay. 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 Uh, yeah, yeah. Next on the agenda was Cafe Pavarotti, uh, which just a little history on. Uh, Would be great. Yes. Yes. Uh, <coughs> you didn't make him an inspector, though. Oh, oh, sorry, yes, uh, I'm sorry, motion, uh, can I make a motion to make Bob Bracey our health inspector? Second. 
Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Thank you. No? Uh, all in favor of Bob Bracey as our inspector? Aye. Uh, all three zero, yes. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. Uh, uh, yes, I'm sorry, for Cafe Par Parvarati, a little history. Uh, last year, actually, I think it might have even been before I was a member of the board, mm -hmm. uh, the it, Cafe Poverty cho changed ownership from, from a past <coughs> one to a current one. <coughs> and in the inspection process, our past health agent, Steve, did an inspection and found that, I guess, the, uh, the venting was not up to code, the safety code. It was dripping re grease, 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 out, grease out, out into the sidewalk, mm -hmm. uh, which he brought to our attention. And we decreed at the time that we would want to see that corrected. We gave him a time frame to get that corrected. Uh, we asked for six months, well, to, to, to get it immediately taken care of, the, the immediate public health issue, which was the grease, uh, and to give us some plans within six months mm -hmm. of what he can do to fix the venting. If you're familiar with the vent, it goes right out on Haven Street, and it sort of, it hangs over the sidewalk, if across you take a look at it. Across the fish market, yeah. Yeah, across from the fish market, right. uh, which, uh, as I found, as I did a little more research, I can give you in the history, but at the time, we had asked for uh, some plans to fix the venting. We gave him six months to fix it and a year to implement whatever the plans were that he gave us after six months. Uh, six months went by and we did we did get plans, I think, Bob. Did we got a set of uh, yes. we got a set of plans? Yeah. I, if I they remember they did meet that deadline of uh, submitting the set of plans to the board. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> I had uh, received those and forwarded those. Okay. Through. Uh, and then, but then the year came, which was in July, and there was no, no finished work done, which brought us brought it back before the board. Uh, I've done a little bit of research first with uh, the assistant chief Paul Jackson in the fire department. Uh, as far as th there is, there are there are codes. There's a sanitary code which we have jurisdiction over. There's a fire code, which the, obviously the fire department does, <coughs> and there's the building code, which uh, I spoke with Glenn Redmond about, the, the building code. Now, according to Glenn, this has never been up to his review. Uh, I, when it changed ownership, evidently it did not have to, there was no renovations, so it didn't have to undergo right. a code, a code uh, review. So, Technically, it was up to code when it was made. It hasn't been changed, so it's grandfathered in. It's up to code now. Whether or not it would be code if they did renovate, I don't know, but that's really not our purview here. Uh, but it is up to building code. Uh, the fire uh, chief Jackson did state that he is up to his inspections. He, he's, uh, I believe, required two inspections a year uh, for, to have the grease thing done. So he is up to his fire code. Uh, I'm just a little uncomfortable with s instituting action for someone that's tried to do all the right things as he's been going along. Uh, also, I did notice he did have a sort of a shelf. Is that is that? Can somebody yeah. fill me in with that? I haven't. <coughs> well, when when obviously when I received this, I did a little research on it and uh, went out there at the uh, direction of the board. Um, I took Laura with me when she came on board, and, and we did a little research to see as far as whether or not this was more of a mechanical issue than anything else. Um, I did meet with um, Deputy Jackson on this matter and, and we had some discussion on, as you mentioned, Mr. Chair, um, you know, if there wasn't any renovation done to this, in, the in theory, it, it could be grandfathered in. Um, yeah. The fire department didn't have any issues with it. They were up to code with the fire safety regulations. Um, so when me and Laura went there, we, we found that actually what we believed to be what was going on was there was a seal on the inside of the wall that was causing the grease to drip down on the side. And that was what we believed to be the problem. Mm -hmm. We had uh, the permit holder, you know, have somebody come in who was an HVAC specialist and look at this. 
Um, and I believe that they confirmed that that was the issue and that if they just put a drip pan underneath it, that would cause the problems. Um, so, so far, as far as I know, we haven't had any complaints since then. Um, and so it would have been my recommendation as the former interim health agent to allow them the opportunity to see if, if that is indeed what the cause was and see if they can maintain it and give them that, that opportunity to do so as opposed to, uh, you know, in, inflicting a hardship on this particular restaurant because I think the last thing I want to see is a, a vacant storefront here in the center of town. Mm -hmm. So that would be my recommendation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just real quick, Bob, if you could fill me in a little bit from a mechanical standpoint. There's supposed to be an internal trap that that, that grease would theoretically run into that they clean on a regular basis. Is that how those systems work? Yeah, there's work? usually an internal one inside, yeah. but with the way the HVA systems are hoods are set up, the exhaust would draw the grease out, they would have drip pans on the end. Any excess grease would go into the filter and then most of them have a drip pan. Okay. Um, so there's a couple of different ways. This is an older system. So this isn't a case of it literally coming out the vent itself, but coming out through a seal, a broken I think it seal was, somewhere? What we believe is where the wall was, there was a seal. That, yeah. I don't think it was installed correctly, but I think there was a seal, or maybe the seal had worn over time. Sure. Because when we were there one day, we lifted up some of the siding, and you could see it was dripping behind the siding, which is an indication that there might be a loose or a broken seal, as opposed to the vent itself spitting it up. I assume we have informed the building owner as well, right? Um, I, I believe that we yes, have discussed the yeah, building owner was Not okay. directly with me, but with the permit holder to have a discussion yeah. with the building owner okay. um, to see who would be responsible right. to, to make those necessary repairs or who's responsible for that. Okay. Um, but my understanding is that they've made those corrections, um, and I, I think we went out a few times after that um, and didn't see any indications of any issues. Okay. How long were they closed down for? Well, they weren't clo they weren't closed down by us. They weren't closed down no, by us. So okay. I don't know if, when they transferred ownership. I don't know if they were closed at all. Uh, I don't know. Okay. But we never no. We just so it's remained open, and they've been working with the town. Yes. To try to remedy the yes. situation. Okay. So I, I guess uh, my question is, should we rescind our order from uh, a year ago to require a building, you know, a, a, a reventing of it? Because that was our that was our order back a year ago. Uh, I mean, I think I would I would feel comfortable rescinding our order to do that. Uh, maybe. I would also like I would like to get proof that all of the uh, inspections are being done, just just to just for our safety. If if we could require him to submit his biannual biannual semi biannual checkups from the fire department. So well, yeah, I mean they're technically supposed to have a professional company come in twice a year, inspect it and clean it. Okay. Based on the amount of cooking, you might want to make a suggestion that they do a quarter on the interior hmm. side of it and then maybe have them develop some sort of a log where they monitor the outside at least once every two or three weeks or once a month and provide that log to the health agent to ensure that they're actually checking the inside and the outside. Okay. That would be a suggestion. Okay. Because the concern is if you've already seen damage when you've peeled back, yeah. Now we have no way of knowing is that old or new damage. So is there some recommendation we could make that that be repaired? Well, we could ask for a copy of the invoice of the repair that was done. Because that. Yeah, we could certainly do that. That would be a concern. Is then oh, absolutely. No way of knowing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we could certainly do that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, we should be doing that anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, so Laura, could you check in on the? Uh, the inspections, if it's done by a licensed, uh, a licensed provider of cleaning, they would have to show that inspection sticker, correct? Yes. Could we check in on that bi uh, biannually and uh, should, should we make them check their own facilities for compliance or is that something we would want to do? Well, I was deferring to the outside. To mm -hmm. make sure that they're monitoring that right. to make sure it's, it's clean. Right. But they would need a professional company to come in and do the inside. But do that's something that normally goes to the fire department. I can get the copies. As, as long as we just, just as long as we have uh, 
we see them, I think, would I be happy with. Because as a fire chief, aware that the grease was in the wall. Oh, there. Okay. Yeah. I mean, well, and so does that, all that grease have to be removed and cleaned, or is it? Removed and cleaned, which I believe it was. And I think that would, I think that would satisfy me anyway. Any other, any other ideas? I'm, I'm not a real building person. But. I'm assuming the only other way to do it is to go all the way up the side, the side of the building. Is that? I think that would be it. It sounds expensive. I think that's why they're trying to do it. Yeah, and I think it can't go in the wall because it's residents up there. Right. Like that. It's too old a building. Yeah. Okay. So, do we need a motion to rescind? Is uh, that what you were looking for? Yeah, I would. I would like. I would like him to be able to stay in business, yeah, without doing that. <clears throat> and that is our that is our motion from a year ago to, for him to do that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, would you like to make a motion? Yeah, um, not knowing the verbiage you used uh, <laughs> a year ago, yeah, I'd be happy to second a motion you make. It sounds like he tried to fix the problem to the best that they can in yes. that older building. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like they did fix it. Right? Yeah, I mean, I guess my motion would be to rescind the order to uh, revent, and, I, and I'd have to actually look at the at the motion that we made a year ago, but to rescind that motion to revent the the venting system for the for the oven. Which is really kind of a, it was a total it was really more of a renovation I guess mm -hmm. which yeah yes it says I, I think if I could that that the issue here was that the the order was to install a new HVAC hood ventilation system mm -hmm. and so now renovated. maybe you're rescinding that order to install a new system is that right uh, if mm -hmm. yes then again I should have I should have looked at the actual order but that is the crux of it we mm -hmm. had asked them to investigate or actually give plans and then mm -hmm. do the HVAC mm -hmm. system over the mm -hmm. venting system so yes if we if if we could uh, have a motion to rescind that order um, make a motion to rescind uh, the order to replace the current HVAC system hood vent system excuse me uh, well, I can second uh, and that's as long as it's under code with the board and well, the yes. fire department. Correct. And, the and that's and that's what we will be checking <coughs> with our with our order. And I can bring those receipts to the next meeting. Okay. Uh, all in favor of rescinding that order? All opposed? Uh, three zero. Thank you. Uh, gee, that that's pretty much all I had on the agenda. I don't know if, if anyone else has any. Item. Nancy? I one thing, actually, I'm glad you're, you're here because um, when I had asked for all of the inspection reports and I went through them, everything was signed and up to, to par except um, all of the camp licenses except one. None of the inspections were signed. So the concern is they were issued camp licenses with invalid inspections. Do you have something I can look at? Yeah, all of them. The only one that was actually signed was the one that um, Laura did, the um, John Smith soccer camp. And the reason why I bring it up is your name is on all of these sure. licenses. Yeah. So I did reach out to compliance at DPH because camps are closed now. Yeah. So we have to figure out, since you cannot sign these again because they're documents. We've issued licenses with invalid inspections because they weren't signed. So we need to figure out with DPH, um, and this is Paul Hallman, Hoffman, I'm going to mispronounce it, who's going to get back to me. He's camp com uh, compliance. And the other concern was, it's not on all of them, but one of them, and I don't have this in front of me, um, Bob, is that it, um, when you're looking at health records, it just says, under health records, it just says Donna. 
and unfortunately the date of the inspection was a time period when Donna was not our public health nurse, so I don't really know what to make of any of that. So the camps that are in question are the YMCA, the Reading Rec, and the Girl Scout camp. Um, we have licenses, but um, invalid inspections. Now, would the would the actual facilities have a copy of a license or an inspection that was done which applies these, to them? These are the inspections. These are copies of all the inspections. Okay. So we are released from the. Are these the actual uh, these, no, these the actual ones? Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to sit with Gene and, and go over these and, and see what So what I will find why. out, you know, when DPH gets back in touch with me, um, what we have to do to rectify this. I don't know if we have to notify the camps. Um, I don't know where the liability is. If if there's something that happened in these camps, I that is for a different department, um, but we cannot um, let that one go. Well, I know I did one of the camps. I did one of well, you sessions. signed for all the camps, is what I'm saying. The well, I signed the premise. Signed. So normally, what happens right. is the director or the agent, you have inspectors that go out and do the field work. But there was only one inspection that was signed. You have people that go out and do the field work, and they bring the reports back to the director, and they tell the director that the camp had passed. Then I would sign off the, uh, on the. Uh, on the permits. That's normally the protocol of how that works, whether it's a mm -hmm. camp inspection, pool inspection, restaurant inspection. Well, right, no, I, yeah. I have all of them and everything is signed. I mean, everything yeah. is up to, everything was signed. Well, we have reports of... that we had somebody who was licensed and professional, whether it was Laura or John Fraley, like someone who's a professional, has the field experience, based on these reports, actually went out and did the inspection. That's what I'm saying, Bob. Is yeah. We don't have that documented is the concern. They're not, right but they're not signed is the concern. You okay. signed the, the license, but they're all, that's, what that's, why, that's why we just want to clear yeah, it up. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's something uh, I'll sit with Gene and we'll, we'll discuss that. Right, and I'll find out and pass on. But from a legality standpoint, the deal, yeah. you had a, a field inspector, whether it was myself or Laura, who was licensed to do these, actually went out and did them. So there's no legalities to the town. So is there a reason why? everything else is signed that I've gotten reports on. Is there a reason uh, why... We're talking about this, we're not talking about anything else. No, no, but, but is there a reason why it, none of those would have been signed by who inspected them? If you I inspected only, them... I'm only commenting on these right now. I don't okay. know what else you're talking about. Well, these are the only ones because everything okay. else I have, yeah. everything is signed. It gives everyone's okay. full name on inspection. So that's and, why I was wondering. Like I said, what I'll do is I'll sit down with Gene, who's the department head, and as the former interim health director, we'll go over and we'll figure this out. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll come back, well, either Gene, Laura, or myself, we'll come back and we'll let you know what happened. Okay. okay. And then if you would find out why it just says Donna's name, where it says health records, because she was no longer even our public health nurse. So that's the other concern is the date mm -hmm. of one of these inspections that we need yeah, to find Yeah, well, we'll have to find out with that, you know, okay. I mean, I would assume at the time that I did one of the inspections, she was still on this here. And usually it's responsible. What dates are we talking mm -hmm. about? Because yeah, I met with the people prior to leaving. Yeah. Yeah. She, she, Donna sat down with the, all those people. She so she will have them. documentation, so this could well, I don't know. I just know she had meetings, and she was okay. downstairs in the lower right. uh, conference room with yeah. all those people. Right. So I that's where you just, their files. Right. Just want to get that Can set. I see those? Yeah. Just <clears throat> copies. But just a you know clean clean house. Mm -hmm. That's all. And is my understanding we can't speak with Donna? That came up last night. That we believe we are not as as town employees. I guess we are not allowed to. Or he was given counsel. Legal not, counsel. Legal counsel. counsel is not just not reach out. We're not in a position to do that. Okay. Just one sign. You Wait. know, I, I just know from a, from a protocol standpoint, you, what we do in North Reddit mm -hmm. is I would normally do most of the field work mm -hmm. and I would defer the medical records to my public health nurse. Mm -hmm. And she, as a rule of thumb, what they do is they normally review one of every three. 
And what Dave Williams tells us at the state level who writes the camp regulations is that that's really the rule of thumb of what you do. Mm -hmm. And then you put a restriction on the permit to say that it's actually the responsibility of the application on the permit holder to ensure through the healthcare consultant mm -hmm. that all the campers meet the requirements of the immunization requirements so under the code. So, so we really, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's just more of a, mm -hmm. of a protocol that we have in there. Right. Glance through them. Years ago, yeah, the public health nurse used to take them home yeah. and look through every single one of them. Well, records. sometimes, you know, what happens is a lot of times in most municipalities, you'll have 50 kids mm -hmm. and you might only get 20 of those camp records. Well, they want to open up on a certain day, but you haven't looked at those other 30. So the state tells us you have to put a restriction on the permit to make sure that the health care consultant who they hire is responsible to ensure that all those campers meet the immunization requirements under the code. And that's normally what we do in North Rand because we never get them all when we're supposed to get them. So that might be the case here. That's something that we'll have to investigate and we'll have to look at. Okay. Uh, any other concerns, questions? Uh, Yes. One, one more, because mm -hmm. um, you're here. Yes. In terms of, will you be able at this point to present tobacco regulations to the Board of Selectmen, or do you need the Board to <coughs> make a motion to direct you to do that? Uh, I'm not sure if the request is. I mean, not the tobacco, the uh, pesticide. Um, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. sorry, uh, wrong thing. I'm sorry. I was, was, yes, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Poisons, I just, sure, they're sure. poisons. I'm sorry, I get them mixed up. <clears throat> A uh, motion would probably be a good way to do it. Uh, okay. Just a little, you want to give them the background why you're doing it this way, John? <laughs> uh, well, yes, we were uh, approached by town, uh, Res town residents uh, about the dangers of applying pesticides to public lands being sidewalk and tree lawns, right. which, uh, you know, as, you, as you're walking down along the street, I've often myself seen the little white pellets out from the sidewalk and onto the tree lawn. Well, that is a pesticide, those are herbicides, which can be toxic for not only people, but pets and, you know, the pets that eat whatever they do there. Uh, it could be toxic. So we, we kind of pilfered marble heads regulations on it uh, and submitted did, did a few modifications, submitted it to town council uh, for his idea of what the regula what, how, what he what he thought of the regulations. Uh, he came back with several uh, opinions of changes that we should make uh, based on we had no control over town land uh, of school school property. We had no no control over town property. That's the selectman. Uh, we had no control over town employees. Uh, we may have violated a Wendell, Wendell versus Massachusetts law, which nice. states that board, uh, well, boards of health have no control over the legal use of pesticides. This goes back to like 1984. Mm -hmm. it was. Wetlands, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. So that we technically had no, no right to make this uh, regulation. So we kind of worked around what he, what he had and submitted it again. And then it basically came back to, uh, well, only the selectmen have control over town land. Right. Sidewalks and tree lawns are town land. And rather than try to use Mass General Law to mm -hmm. uh, enforce the safety of the public, the health and safety of public, which you know, we might be able to do if you want to, if you want to go that route. We kind we'll of just get it done. We kind of decided <laughs> to let's let's work with the selectmen here and, and get something that's good for the public. Yes, just get uh, it done to get the, to get done. Okay, so what's been done to this point as far as uh, information gathering? Uh, we were the pros and cons. So we worked with DPW. Okay. We've had it all vetted um, with um, basically them. We've I've met with them twice. Um, they've uh, did you send the them the final the tree warden? Tree warden. Did you send them the final copy? That was the one thing we were supposed to do. Uh, did I send that to them? I'll have to look. I to see if you sent it to Jane. That was her, her a courtesy to okay. have yep. her see it before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, we, we did all of that. Um, mm -hmm. What we um, had wanted to do this August was have an open public, public meeting. meeting. But if it's going to be with the Board of Selectmen, that probably would be their purview. 
we wanted to have um, a community meeting to basically get all of that. Okay. Um, but we've been told by town council to give it to them. So we probably need to make a motion to have them take that over. I'm assuming, unless you want us to do the open. Well, it, it, we, it would be good to have some structure to what you're looking for us to do in that motion. Mm -hmm. Basically, I mean, I would like to just have your blessing. Uh, I don't want, to, I mean, I know in speaking with Bob, he's a little reluctant yeah. uh, to make a, make a rule that right. you, can't, you can't do this on your tree lawn. So which, you, and I'm, but it's, I'm but it's perfectly, not, but that's the problem. It's not their tree lawn. Well, the well, that's 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 well, the, that's problem, exactly. the problem that you run into is that if you have a tree lawn and a sidewalk, it's kind of a well-established yeah, thing right. that that is town land. It's we have a land. lot of land where people go right up to the street, yeah, and yeah. there's about eight foot of that. Right. Somewhere's fifteen, somewhere's right. five. It's tree. That's it's, it's that's the, the surveyor had to figure it out. It's town. <clears throat> so what, we're just trying not to poison young children and dogs. That's what it comes down to. Okay, so this is the first time I've heard of any of this yeah. because mm -hmm. we haven't. Had it open. Right. Open. We've been putting articles in the newspaper for the past two years, dribs and drabs, to educate the public. Okay. About pesticide use. And you got both sides of the, the ball when you got that. The people that are for it, the people that are against it. Who's who's for poisoning dogs and children? Honestly, Nancy. No, I'm serious. Don't don't, don't put words in my mouth. No, no, have you, but got, I'm just have you to have, that. have you or have you not? Got sides from both sides. Have we you looked been, at it from both angles? We haven't been able to have an open meeting yet, Kevin. So the answer is no. Okay. That's what. That's where we. That's stopped. fine. Yeah, that's fine. That's what meeting. I'm looking for. There, so there's always laws of unintended consequences when you deal with these, and you can make anybody's um, judgment work however you want. The question I would always have is, mm -hmm. where's it coming from? I like to qualify the source, the and I like to get both sides of it before I make a decision one way or the other, whether mm -hmm. it's bad or good or or, or it's nothing. Mm -hmm. um, so personally, I, I don't know what we'd be asking the selectmen tonight. Well, to you need to establish that first before you ask. Uh, we need to know what you're asking for. Uh, so it sounds like the only thing we'd be asking for is permission to put a policy in place hmm. over yeah. town land. Over town land, correct. Okay. But well, we would have to. Do you that. have to do. We would that. have to do that. But we they want to know what specific you'd be looking for as your role at the board of health. Realize you can't do it under the pesticide regs, but we could do it as the landowner. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we need the specifics of what that would entail, what prohibitions. Well, we, we would have a fee. We, we did have a fee implemented in it. And the yeah. town that, council reduced it, remember? Yeah. yeah. It like we a, had a 500000 That was Marblehead. Yeah, that was reduced. And he said um, we couldn't do it. It was better than some of the other communities who have much more. All right. Uh, so if you... I don't know if you want to do that tonight, or you're in a position to do well, that tonight. Well, let's, let's, next no, meeting, let's maybe. Next meeting we can do that. That, yeah, that's not on the agenda yeah, for tonight. I we'll just we'll think it will. Perhaps what would be helpful is if you could email them both. I'd love to get caught up on yeah. the well, pesticide yeah. regulations that we have written, yeah. and that, you know, uh, Laura, you do can you, review yeah, them. We do not. Do you DPW have the pesticide has regs? No? looked at okay. them. Okay. Town Council has looked at them. I will okay. send them Good. to Laura, yeah. and she will forward them. That would be helpful. Can you give Laura your email addresses? I actually took hers off the end. I got mine on here. Do you want to write? Please. Do you have any copy of the Marblehead law? Oh, no. You can actually just go on your website. Oh, yeah. It's actually there. We're already vetted, and um, that's why we actually utilize theirs. Um, Weston and I'm trying to think of the other one. Um, don't vote if it was Needham or not. Uh, no, Wellsby. But the one, the Marblehead one, we actually didn't use a lot of it because DPW actually thought some of it didn't actually apply to our town. So. <clears throat> uh, one item that Jean alerted me to today is our next meeting is on the 20th of September, was mm -hmm. scheduled. Mm -hmm. That is Rosh Hashanah. Uh, so I guess out of respect, could we, I don't know if we can meet before sundown, or should we change the date? Uh, You're almost doing that, aren't you? I would prefer sundown it on, past to, I would prefer uh, it on Tuesday. On I don't know if it's possible to do it to the Tuesday. 
Let me check my. So yeah, we have two other meetings canceled that night already. It's so Tuesday the 19th. Uh, we're not meeting. That would be okay. Try. And that's the same time, 5.30? Yes. That's fine with me. Uh, yes, I should be able to change it Tuesday to the 19th. Tuesday, 9-19. 9-19. Yes. Uh, in the burger room? If I can get it, that would be fine, yes. 5.30, correct. 5.30 works. So September Yeah. 19th. So you would be posting the meeting and reserving the room? Uh, yep. I'll, yeah, I'll see if I can get that as soon as I can. Is is that okay at 5.30 before the select uh, Is that? I'll be running a little late, but I could be That's fine. Is that been accepted uh, is that okay? before the select ones? Is that all with, with Dan? Uh, there's no select ones meeting that night. Oh, there's no meeting that night. No meeting that night. The 12th and the 26th. Mm -hmm. That gives me a couple of weeks to get caught up. So that'd be great. Yeah. Uh, I, just, I, I did want to mention uh, a couple of resources. Uh, obviously, one is the Mass General Laws. Uh, Mass General Laws Title 16 is the public health laws, which is, does kind of drag on. Uh, I find to be a little more helpful and more readable. Uh, the Mass Association of Health Board has a very good guidebook for Board of Health members of Massachusetts. Okay. That's mahb.org, and their guidebook will come right up. Uh, that's been an invaluable resource for me. This one they might want. The regulations. In our regulations. Yes. Yep. Those I've been looking over. Yeah, those they have, we have those good. online. Yeah. Which have been good. Yes. Mm -hmm. And any any other topic of discussion that was unknown 48 hours ago? <laughs> um, if you wouldn't mind, um, just so I can be clear on how we're going to go forward with the communication. Do we decide that you're going to communicate with Laura now that she's appointed? I, I believe that's the way we used to do okay. it. I think that, that would be great. Laura, are you fine with that? Sure. Uh, okay. The rest of the board, we can communicate through Laura. That would be, okay. that would be great. And then, as Bob Bracey and I are needed, I don't know if we're going to, if you, we're going to be needed at the actual Board of Health meetings, mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. we'll plan on at least coming to the next one, and then see where we go from there. If we're needed, we'll come. If we're not needed, <coughs> we'll is uh, Bob's uh, appointment to health inspector status meant to be permanent or temporary? Um, I guess for right now it's temporary um, because we're looking at trying a staffing plan yeah. of using part timers. Right. Okay. It's a, a little leaner on the budget, yeah. so we're going to try that out. Um, but we're not really, you know, it's still a, a little trial and error. So. So how many part timers? Right now we have two part timers. Um, we've advertised for a third, and well, it, it can get a little tricky trying to cobble together part-timers, so I have a little bit of experience with it in one of the other areas, and um, anyway, we're, we're hopeful that we can make it work. Okay. Okay, now from a structural standpoint, all the inspectors report to Laura. Laura. Yes. Okay, so it means training-wise comes from you to them. As far as what you're looking for, get yeah. out the health nurse. Okay. Yeah, we've advertised for a health nurse. We've advertised for another. We call it a um, health consultant. Okay. Is the health nurse and health consultant the same position? Okay. No, no, the health consultant is basically the inspector. Okay. Anything else? And I adjourn the meeting at 622. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you John. Welcome. Do I have a list of all the dates of the future meetings? Would you like, or is it always a certain?
Wednesdays. We, we, we try to meet the third okay. Wednesday of the month. Uh, that's I've tried to set my schedule that way, right, Nancy? We yeah. try to. Just we John try to, works evenings, so. I work a lot of evenings, and I try to get the third Wednesday off uh, consistently. Yeah. Is that okay, Kevin, with you? So that's fine. Yep. Yeah. And that makes on the website. Everybody kind of knows when they want to come to meetings. They, yeah, I want to say it's on the website, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, it's on the website. Was it there? Yeah, it is. Okay. It might be on the, it's out on the Board of Health um, page. Now, the letter I got said it was met on the sec, like second Thursday, you know, that was sent to hmm. me um, hmm. from the town manager, so that, that's what I was. Okay, we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Nice to see you. Nice to see you.